ChatGPT is the flagship product of OpenAI, and they're a company most of us have seen in the headlines a lot over the last year. The adoption of their service has been incredible, but along the way we saw articles like this, telling us that ChatGPT isn't going to make it, and its running costs are too high. But how bad is it really, and what's to blame? In this video, I'm going to talk about how memes, jokes and immaturity contributed to the near downfall of ChatGPT, and how the ingrained human nature that makes us draw certain images when given a steamed up window made this all inevitable in the first place. Can ChatGPT come back from this, or is it only getting worse? Whether you've used ChatGPT for serious or not so serious reasons, there's a good chance you'd benefit from learning just how AI systems actually work, and why we get the responses we do. For that, I present you with Brilliant.org, today's video sponsor. I've loved Brilliant's courses on maths and computer science, but I really enjoyed Brilliant's latest and most relevant course for me, How Language Models Work. It takes a new and exciting topic that could potentially be quite difficult, and breaks it down into bite-sized, fun and interactive lessons. The lessons look great, and test your abilities with hands-on puzzles, all while the entire course is laid out to guide you from the basics to more advanced topics. Begin with an introduction to language models, explore how the AI picks the next word in every sentence, and then learn how the calculations behind picking these words results in the creative conversations we've come to know. If you want to learn how the models are trained, or exactly what tokenization is in the context of LLMs, Brilliant has it all covered, and I encourage each of you to keep absorbing as much information as possible. Who knows where we'll be in a year's time? I recommend learning as much as we can now to be as useful as we can later, and Brilliant.org is definitely going to help. If you're already pretty confident with AI and want to learn something different, say you want to get into programming, then the course Thinking in Code will be a genuinely fun way to get started or brush up on existing skills. To try out what Brilliant has to offer, sign up with 30 days completely free by going to brilliant.org forward slash AI chat or click on the link down below. The first 200 to sign up using my link will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. Now there's absolutely no dispute that OpenAI has had a good year. People have been amazed at what AI can do in general, and ChatGPT has been at the forefront of that. Having an almost human interaction with a chatbot that can write incredibly worded content on any topic made it go viral and be discussed by everyone. We've seen family and friends use it, every newspaper talking about it, and we've seen the usage numbers reach crazy levels. But access to this technology is new, and as a result, people have taken some time to get used to it, resulting in a kind of testing stage where the amount of conversations taking place has been excessive. The question is, how much of this volume can OpenAI handle, and what percentage of it is legitimate conversations from standard users, and how much is just memes? I think we can put most of the AI use onto a slider. At one end, those real conversations that OpenAI would class as more favourable, like an essay request or a meal plan breakdown, and at the other end, the more memey ones. The ones that don't really benefit OpenAI, and rarely benefit the user. Now I'm not blaming the users. Humans are humans, we easily entertain weirdos that enjoy rude jokes. We draw particular shapes on the steam on windows and we spray graffiti on walls. We like to test and break stuff in our own ways and make experiences relevant to us and our friends. ChatGPT being able to spin up unique responses to niche questions just gave the inner child in each of us a platform to get some comical response from a robot. I therefore think it's pretty safe to assume that a substantial number of users, maybe even most, were not really doing a whole lot. Asking for recipes they won't use, pointless jokes and interesting facts about stuff they either already knew or were just trolling. A quick Google shows millions of results for trolling ChatGPT with memes or tricking ChatGPT. It's clearly been a big hit. And again, I'm not saying this is bad use. In fact, I probably didn't help when I made a bunch of jailbreaks that make the AI answer when it normally shouldn't. It was and still is fun to test the limits of AI. But imagine you're running OpenAI for a second. You've released a groundbreaking service with rapid adoption that's quickly changing the entire world and working landscape. Yet you're seeing all these chats coming in with nonsense memes, vulgarities and generally dubious behaviour. You released a tool for mankind to wield with purpose and instead got resource intensive AI generated tomfoolery. Now what are some examples of these not so beneficial conversations? The requests that are more banter than genuine. These were either memes created by the AI or it was the way in which the AI responded people enjoyed. There were users looking for future predictions, fantasy recipes or validation of weird ideas. There were those getting the AI to make inside jokes, to mock celebrities or to write funny songs about niche topics. Those looking to spread the humour were getting the AI to write YouTube comments, spam for Twitch and jokes that they could send across 40 discords. Of course there was a hefty amount of users just continuously checking if the AI was sentient. The hype around those employees falling in love with the AI really got people trying to see if it was alive. There were also those just testing, checking if the AI could lie, if it could do maths or art if it could tell the future or if it had any sort of bias. People were testing if the AI would repeat certain words or if it could be tricked into speaking about some bizarre topic. 
Some were simply asking questions that they weren't really after the answers to. The how-tos that they most likely won't do. How to get rich, how to get girls, and how to get Robux. A lot of this may sound like fun and genuine news, but I think it's safe to classify a lot of this as the probing or trolling that OpenAI would most likely put at the low end of favourable interactions. Another big point for this video comes from my experience creating and using jailbreaks. They were a massive part of the hype. Users first experiencing ChatGPT would find themselves hitting apology messages where the AI wasn't able to reply. Most users would accept this, change their question and move on. But for the rest of us, it felt like a challenge. How can we make ChatGPT answer that question anyway, regardless of the rules? This led to pre-written opening messages that made the AI forget its limitations and disregard the rules altogether. We saw a bunch of variations, with the likes of the Do Anything Now jailbreak, Developer Jailbreaks, Little GPT and more. With each of these came a lot of testing, by those making them and the thousands of others who wanted to see the chatbot swear. I honestly believe not even 1% of them actually wanted to learn how to make what they were asking for, but the amount of people asking anyway was insane. We also saw a big surge in the request for code, and while yes there was standard testing of coding, there was also the meme side of it too. Attempts to get code that made you good at Roblox or the source code for dodgy Discord bots, often never to be used, but because the AI originally declined, it had to be done. The whole situation is a massive game of cat and mouse. Filters continue to be applied, limiting the AI talking about certain topics. But while that's happening, there's thousands of users creating new jailbreaks that force the AI to talk about them anyway. I'm certain that it was accounted for in some way, but I can't believe OpenAI was sat there thinking it was fine when they saw so many requests for ChatGPT to read out Windows keys while pretending to be grandma reading a bedtime story. I think that last point goes beyond jailbreaks and begins to outline the negatives to going viral. There's no way for OpenAI to have anticipated how this many people would use and abuse the service. AI models need training, and while it may seem like having loads of data is better, I'd be interested to know what percentage of all this data was actually beneficial enough to train the model on. Just how much of it had to be ignored. There must be a few inside jokes and dumb questions in the mix, meaning there's a real risk of any model produced becoming more of a meme bot than a chatbot. At its peak, OpenAI was known to be spending from 700,000 to millions every day for usage alone. Along with this, the troubles in their senior management meant OpenAI had their work cut out for them, and honestly, what can they do? Probably not a whole lot, but they're definitely pressing on. They've continued to release some pretty incredible features, like the leaping capabilities of GPT-4, custom instructions, GPTs, and all of the integration to third-party tools. The difference now is they've locked a lot of these features behind a paywall, which is fair enough. It's more than likely improving the quality of interactions from this paying user base. This could be solving the problem of bad training data by only taking from this group, increasing legitimate and more realistic interactions. We've also seen them add ever-increasing restrictions to ChatGPT, unfortunate for some users, but a good thing for OpenAI. Jailbreaks that I've tested extensively no longer work, and while a good amount of the ones I've written still do, the limits on ChatGPT are in a crazy place right now. Paid plans, increased filters, new models, and the general public being used to AI all of this will hopefully help ChatGPT reach a balance of genuine users and those just messing about. But I personally believe there'll always be a risk, no matter what OpenAI does. With each new update, new tests will be carried out by the users, new jailbreaks will be needed, and new memes made possible. An example being the update for AI-generated images. Having run many image bots on my Discord server, I saw a lot of users requesting some questionable images, and these rarely came individually. Each time the user wasn't 100% happy, they'd try again resulting in hundreds of variations of the same thing. There's other features to worry about too. The new GPTs, custom instructions, better language translations, and the ability to use the API to integrate the chatbot in so many unpredictable ways. I think ChatGPT's success really is a blessing and a curse. They'll release new features that will get abused and overused, and it'll be up to OpenAI to moderate these waves and handle the cost to do so. And this leads on to the final question. How has OpenAI's success potentially benefited the other AI services available? Well, ChatGPT ultimately took the industry role of being a testing ground. Users experienced their first AI interactions on ChatGPT, and once they'd had time to test it out, many then realized there were different ones out there too, like Claude by Anthropic, Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, and Snapchat AI. But did the users spend quite as long testing them? I imagine not. With a lot of testing already done on ChatGPT, these other AI likely saw a more streamlined user type those coming to the service for the results and not the experience. They were signing up and carrying out actual work. 
and while they perhaps had less users, they were likely getting a high retention rate and seeing a positive, more tailored experience. Those looking for a more helpful, honest and harmless AI could use Claude. Those looking for more casual, chat-based services, Clyde and Snapchat. Those looking for an AI with real-time data on current events, Bard and Bing. And for those looking for a more unhinged model, we now have Grok by Elon Musk, a service bound to benefit from ChatGPT now being heavily filtered. It's been an exciting year, and it looks like it'll be another one coming. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to leave a like and sub to the channel, as it really does help me out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one soon.